Jet, you're going to have to get you a donut for your neck now, bro. Damn, dog. What's up, my dudes? Oh, here we go again. A little more soupy cross drama, okay? If you didn't see this, it was pretty much right after the 450 main event at San Diego, okay? I know we were all hyped up on Plessinger's win and shit, but um, they showed as Plessinger was hugging Ken Roxon after the race, in the background you had the complete opposite effect going on, all right? Basically what happened here was during the race, during the 450 main event, Jet Lawrence was hung up behind Jason Anderson for fourth place. That, you know, it took Jet Lawrence like forever to get around Jason Anderson. He finally does whatever, right? Nothing really crazy seemed to have actually happened on the track other than Jet struggling to get around Jason Anderson. And it was for a fourth place. That was damn near for a podium. So you can understand why Jason Anderson wasn't just getting out of the way. Okay? But nonetheless, what happens is, is right after the race, Jet Lawrence is parked and he basically, like, tells Jason Anderson to come over to him. Okay, Jason Anderson ain't got no problem. He was ready to just ride off into the, you know, the pit area, go home, the race is over. All right. Jet Lawrence is one million percent the entire instigator in this whole situation here. Okay, so I've seen some of these people post certain things like Anderson grabbed Jet Lawrence helmet and blah, blah, blah. That's not really the right way to put it, okay? It's all about who instigated the situation. What happens after that, you know, that's kind of what you, whatever you want to call self-defense, standing up for yourself, whatever, right? But basically what happens is, is Jason Anderson pulls up beside him like, what's, what's your problem, bro, right? What is it, little squirt, right? <laughs> and, uh... Jet Lawrence starts pointing the finger in his face. He starts touching on his jersey. And then he goes to the extent of actually grabbing Jason Anderson's helmet. Okay, this was the very first actual real touching incident. Okay, and then that obviously then makes Jason Anderson grab, really grab Jet Lawrence's helmet. He basically showed Jet Lawrence how to grab somebody's helmet, okay? Jet Lawrence just kind of, kind of held on to Anderson's helmet, you know what I'm saying? Anderson was trying to leave. He was literally trying to pull away, and Jet grabs his helmet and holds on to his helmet, which then makes Jason Anderson grab Jet Lawrence's helmet in response, and then he pulls it down real fast, right? giving him that whiplash effect, bro. <laughs> and uh, that's all that really happened. Then Anderson kind of pushes uh, Jet Lawrence's hands away, and then he pulls away. All right? So, listen, bro. I don't care how much of a Jet Lawrence fanboy you are. There's just simply no defense for this right here. Absolutely none. It's not smart for Jet Lawrence to do this. You think of it in the way of, like, Jet, like, what are you doing, dog? You're instigating with a guy that is obviously going to fight back, a guy that is obviously going to stand up for himself. He's been involved in many different scraps on the track. That's the guy you want to go instigate with? That's the guy you want to go grab his helmet? And oh, by the way, let's not forget, he is a 450 Supercross champion, Something that you are not yet, Jet, okay? <laughs> and listen, it's one thing to come up to a guy after a race and you start saying, hey, fuck you, bro, for that pass, or fuck you for holding me up, or whatever, you know? That's one thing. But the second you start touching, the second you start grabbing the dude's helmet, that's kind of like grabbing a dude by his shirt. Uh, that's that calls for gloves off, in my opinion. Once you start going to that level, you're at another level, okay? Some people talking about Anderson overreacted. What? 
Bro, if somebody came up to you and grabbed you by the shirt, uh, I'm just saying right now, I would have done a lot more than Anderson did. I'm just saying, like, I would have been putting a fist up in that helmet. I wouldn't have just been grabbing a helmet. I would have been doing a little more than that. So, I don't think Anderson was in the wrong at all. Not even a little bit here. I mean, and this wasn't even for, like, a Anderson took out you know, Jet Lawrence, it wasn't anything like that. This just screams to me like Jet Lawrence thinks he's the highest boy on the horse, bro. I mean, he's he's got got it in his head at this point. Like, well, I'm the perfect outdoor guy. I'm going to come in and whoop their ass. I won my first 450 Supercross race ever, bro. He's starting to get that. That just screams to me that weird cockiness before you even got it, bro. You're in a whole different league here. And most of your competition was not even there in the outdoor season. So you need to be real careful right now. You're just a little new rookie boy coming in. I promise you these guys in the 450 class, they don't vibe with that. You thinking you're just going to come through and steamroll everybody, and then you're going to be grabbing dudes' helmets, previous 450 champions' helmets, because you think he held you up in the race. That ain't going to go over well, man. And you can apologize all you want. You know, obviously, Jet Lawrence comes out with his apology 2.5 seconds later after this incident. Jason Anderson is not that dumb, okay? It, that ain't going to change nothing. You created an enemy out of Jason Anderson, and I don't know if you forgot how good he did at Anaheim 1. I'm not really sure if you forgot about that, but, you know, this ain't the guy you want to smoke with, I can promise you, because I guarantee you, you let Jason Anderson get a couple of good starts, and he's going to be right in a position that would be an absolute thorn in your side, Jet Lawrence. So, you really don't want to do this. You really don't, but you already did it, and there ain't no going back. You know, everybody saw it. It's a big drama thing, like, and I promise you all of your other peers in the 450 class are looking at you like I just described. Who the hell does this kid think he is? Not even a 450 Supercross champion yet, and you act like you're going to come in here and be some boss hog, some big dog, to the point where you're going to start grabbing dudes' helmets, I can just about guarantee you right now, Jet Lawrence would not have grabbed Eli Tomac's helmet. By the way, Eli Tomac and Chase Sexton were getting lapped in the race, okay? So for Anderson to even be up there in a position to be holding you up, Jet Lawrence, he's obviously on a decent level. Again, previous 450 Supercross champion. I don't know why people keep forgetting about that with Anderson. It's kind of bizarre. You ain't no slouch if you have won a 450 Premier Clash championship. You are no slouch. All it takes is winning one of those. And that's a forever in the history book kind of thing. Okay? But I'm just saying, it's like, I don't feel like Jet Lawrence would have grabbed Eli Tomac's helmet like that. He wouldn't have grabbed Chase Sexton's helmet like that. You, you ain't got that respect that you should have for previous 450 Supercross champions. That's what it really is. And that's even more weird. That's even more bizarre to me. I just can't figure that one out. I just cannot figure that one out. Like, bro, bro, bro. So anyways, this is going to get very interesting in the next few races. Jet Lawrence, I can promise you, if there is even remotely a possibility for Anderson to hold you up again, he's going to take it. He's going to do it. Don't try to play games with the guy that likes to play games. What the hell are you doing? It's kind of like Jet's going to have to learn the hard way, man. It, that's what it's starting to look like in this first 450 Supercross championship. He's crashing. He, you know, he crashed in the heat race, had a bad race last week. You know, now he's now he's playing games with Anderson. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, so anyways, yeah, that's basically what happened with this drama situation. Definitely let me know down in the comments what you boys thought about it, but I look at this as being entirely Jet Lawrence instigator. I'm surprised Jason Anderson didn't do more. 
supposedly Anderson got fined. That's what uh, Jet was talking about in his apology. He said he would pay the fine. I, I don't understand why Anderson would get a fine. I mean, that's literally just self-defense. Fucking grab my helmet, bro. We're going to rustle and tussle. I mean, I can't, that's, that's extreme restraint for Anderson to hold back. I honestly thought Anderson was going to start swinging. You know, that's what I actually thought was going to happen. You grab a dude's helmet, that is another level. Because that's kind of like a, come here, motherfucker, I'm going to hold you down. That's kind of, it's like a, it's like a, I'm going to hold your helmet where I got full control of you where you can't even move. Oh, bro. Oh, no, no. Oh, no, no. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. <laughs> uh-uh. Spitzy boy. Oh, I, I would have lost my shit, dog. Oh, thank God I'm not out there because, oh, man, I'd have made a fool out of myself and the other guy, okay? But, you know, I think Anderson showed complete restraint just by basically showing, you know, Jet Lawrence how to actually grab someone's helmet, why you shouldn't be grabbing someone's helmet. That's all he really did. I mean, and then he just went away. He didn't stay there and continue to try. He's like, get the fuck out of my face, bro. Like, dog, what, what do you want to do? You want to sit here and discuss this? Or do you want to try to fight? It's like, what? That's the kind of weird thing. It, it looked to me like Jet Lawrence was all bark in that situation. That's what it looked like. Once it started getting really hands-on, it was kind of like Jet was like, oh shit, oh fuck, we're about to might fight here. Like, oh man, don't be Mr. Bark Boy if you ain't gonna back it up. You don't want to be that kind of guy, Jet Lawrence. You don't want to be that kind of dude. You know what I'm saying? And he didn't just bark either. He, he Again, he did the basically the equivalent of grabbing a dude's shirt, you know, Come here. Come here, bro. I'm gonna grab your shirt. What are you thinking? Right? That kind of a thing. Those are fighting words. I mean, that's... Oh, Brody. Oh, Brody. I'm really surprised Anderson didn't do more. I'm just gonna be honest with you. Um, you know, that was extreme restraint. AMA, can you not understand that? Like, there should definitely have been no fine on Anderson. When somebody is the instigator, you find the instigator. You don't find the guy that is just doing self-defense. You don't do that. That's not how that works, okay? Um, again, had something actually crazy happened on the track, you know, it's a little bit different when you have like a, I don't know, Vince Freeze that, you know, takes you out like five times in one night and risk your life on the track from literally running into you five times in one night. Then you got to put the Weston Pike, you know, mojo on him. That's one thing, but that is not at all what happened in this situation. We saw a lot of that, uh, you know, Anderson being in front of Jet Lawrence on the broadcast. I didn't see anything other than Jet Lawrence getting frustrated that he was so far in the back and he couldn't get around Anderson. That's all I really saw from that. Of course, there could have been one incident, one moment that we just didn't see, but it couldn't have been that crazy because it wasn't like Jet Lawrence got hit down to the ground. It wasn't like Anderson ran into him to the point where he got hit down, you know, fell down on the ground or anything. So it couldn't have been that bad. I just, I literally just think Jet Lawrence is getting frustrated about his race from last week, the, the getting a bad start in this race, you know, him thinking he's Mr. Perfect Boy, right? And then getting caught behind Anderson and getting frustrated and impatient. And then he basically just took it out on Anderson. That's what it seemed like to me. Not smart, not smart. Jet Lawrence got to learn that hard way. There's a lot more kind of, uh, you know, politics involved to winning a 450 Supercross championship. You can't be making enemies. You can't be doing all that. And you also don't want to put off this vibe to all of the other guys out there like Sexton and Tomac and all them guys that, you know, if, if you just barely get held up, you're going to be so rattled in your head that you're going to have to come up to the guy after the race and grab him by the helmet, that, that just shows that you ain't really about it. 
that just shows that you ain't really ready to battle otherwise you're gonna get you're gonna get out of your zone that's what it shows to me like immaturity impatience that does not look good for you in the 450 Supercross Championship. I'm just going to say that right now. But, uh, yeah. You know. What was that other thing that Jet Lawrence did? And he was like, I'm really going to have to rethink that. I don't know. He's done a couple of those things since he got on a 450. Kind of weird. Um, he's definitely done a couple of those weird little kind of... I don't know if you want to call it rookie things. I don't I don't know what you want to call it, but uh, he's certainly fallen into some of those pitfalls here a little bit. And uh, he needs to straighten up.